you're watching the Weather Channel. Weather you can always turn to for accurate, dependable weather forecasts 24 hours a day. The following program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a service of the cable television industry and your local cable company. Welcome to the Weather Classroom, and today we talk about a specific wintertime phenomena. We refer to it as lake effect snow, and if you happen to live downwind of one of the great lakes, you may know just what we're talking about, a very important part of the winter weather across parts of the United States. And we'll take a closer look at measuring snow. Believe it or not, there's actually a legitimate way to measure snow that's accumulating on the ground outside. But let's get started. We'll touch briefly on our lake effect snow and throughout the next uh, eight or ten minutes we'll talk about different aspects of lake effect snow and show you some of the prevailing wind patterns. Now what gets the lake effect pattern initiated is a cold front, usually a strong cold front heading down towards the southeast. Behind that front we have some chilly air coming down from Canada and it's the cold air moving across the relatively warm waters of the Great Lakes picking up moisture that produces the snow squalls. And it can make a big difference if you're downwind of the lakes. This is a look at the annual snowfall in inches for various locations across the Midwest and into the Northeast. You notice downwind of the lakes, we have highlighted some of these areas over 100 inches east of Lake Ontario. Coming east of Lake Michigan, over 60 inches of snow. And in the upper peninsula of Michigan, 100 inches or more is quite possible in any given year. For more on lake effect snow, here's Janetta Jones. These storms can bring large amounts of snow, enough at times to bring a whole community to a grinding halt, while just a few miles away the sun can be shining. But what causes lake effect snow? As can be seen here, when cold air passes over the warm water, it causes the atmosphere to become unstable over the lake. In effect, moisture from the lake develops into snow-laden clouds and deposits snow onto the land. Snow squalls can extend well inland as the air is lifted across hilly areas and the moisture is wrung out. A large amount of snow falls on areas surrounding the lake, such as Buffalo, New York. The memorable snow totals have come from lake effect snows. In 1966, a storm dumped 101 inches of snow in Oswego, New York. In 1972, the same city reported 70 inches, and in 1977, Buffalo and Watertown received three to four feet of snow. Janetta Jones, The Weather Channel. Now, we've talked a little bit about the lake effect process, and as Declan was pointing out, it's cold air rushing over relatively warmer lake water. Let's go ahead and break down an example. Now, again, this occurs over a large body of water, and it is found most commonly in around the Great Lakes region of the United States. In this case, this may be cold air racing out of Canada, passing over one of the lakes, like maybe Lake Superior, Michigan, here on Erie or Ontario, named them all for you, picks up the moisture because this is not frozen over. Once the lake is frozen over and an ice crust forms on it, it cannot pick up the moisture as easily. The end result is it will continue to keep this process going as long as it's open and has uh, some moisture to pick up. Once it starts picking up the moisture and the cold air continues to develop the cloud cover and it moves downstream, then it has enhanced that uh, process and it's actually picked up some moisture to help deposit later on downstream some heavier snows. As you found out just from that report from Janetta, you can get a few locations in the country in and around the Great Lakes, get extremely heavy dumps with snow as that uh, process continues to form and in some cases in the extreme point you could find feet of snow before it's all over with. Well, with a situation like that where you get, could get feet of snow, you need to know the proper way to measure it. What fancy gizmo do meteorologists use to measure the depth of snow? 
Well, I'd rule out any device with buttons, dials, or printouts. Now, the tool the Weather Service uses to measure snow depth is rather quite simple. Only problem is, you've got to use it the right way. Now, the proper way to check snow depth is to take readings from three different yardsticks or snow sticks in an undisturbed location. We go out into the woods because that's the most untouched by man. There's no roads nearby. There's no people walking through it and disturbing it. You get the most pristine atmosphere for checking the snow depth. After reading each stick, add the numbers and divide by three to get the average snow depth. Simple math, really, but the hardest part for some is trying not to trip over their snowshoes. In Duluth, Minnesota, I'm Colin Ventrella for the Weather Channel. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at several locations across the lakes and give you an idea of what the best wind direction would be to get some lake effect snow. In Chicago, along the lakefront here in Lake Michigan, kind of a north-northeast wind. That gets uh, the chance for the air to flow down the length of Lake Michigan, picking up sufficient moisture. If you're in Cleveland, along Lake Erie, notice a northerly wind coming across the western half of Lake Erie, picking up the moisture. And farther east, a west-southwest wind, definitely. In Buffalo, a west-southwest wind is able to travel a good distance across Lake Erie, picking up substantial moisture. Now, as you head east of Buffalo, you go into Rochester. This is also an area in western New York susceptible to lake effect snow squalls. These squalls can be very heavy. Snow can fall at the rate of two to four inches per hour. We've had reports at times of thunder and lightning accompanying some of the snow squalls. Rochester, just one location which has seen that phenomena in the winter time. As far as the lake effect snow, we've been talking about the cold winds coming out of Canada, and you can see these illustrated here. The winds sweep out of Canada. Cold air sets up with the lake streamers or the lines of clouds producing the localized lake effect snows. South Bend, Indiana, and Cleveland, Ohio, two locations getting in on lake effect snow. Into South Bend we go, and this is uh, usually the situation you have to deal with around uh, the northeast part of Ohio. You get the heavier snows, lake effect snows kicking in all kinds of disruptions out at the airports as the snow continues to come down very hard as we go west now to south bend look how much snow here on the ground the folks shoveling out almost up to the knees and this is quite typical some of these lake effect snow events can last on the order of two to three days again the process is lake effect where it's enhanced by the precipitation it falls as the cold air rushes over the relatively warmer lake waters I say relatively warmer, when a situation like we're having recently with the cold air coming out of Canada in the single digits and teens, it passes over, I don't want to jump into it, cold water where it's in the temperatures in the 30s and 40s, but compared to the outside air, yes, it is relatively warmer, and again, that process is enhanced. Now, one part of the country that really seems to get this enhancement of precipitation is in and around the Great Lakes. Well, not only lake effect process, but with warm air advection with a storm system, a low traveling across the Ohio Valley, a couple of places in New York really get dumped with snow, and one of them is Syracuse, New York, and 1993-94 winter seasons definitely adding to their totals. Look at this uh, winter so far. This would take you out of December into January. They've seen almost 100 inches, 94.3. Now, normal to date, what they're expected to see is about 46 inches as we move into the second week in January. Their average winter picks up about 112 inches. So they definitely see a lot more snow as we move into January and February. Let's take you back to last week where they had a combination of a one-two punch and look how it can really add up the snow totals. As the snow is falling, cleaning off cars or shoveling off the steps were a lot like walking on a treadmill. The more you scrape, the more you had to scrape. The snowfall was so intense that between the hours of noon and 2 p.m., 10 inches fell. That's five inches per hour for two hours. Even in a town which gets crushed by snow almost every winter, traffic was snarled. And as more snow fell to the ground, flights into Hancock International Airport were grounded. The airport was closed for nine hours after a Northwest DC-9 coming in from Detroit slid off the runway. And we hit the runway, skid a little bit, I could see snow flying up over the window, and then all of a sudden we kind of stopped dead, and it was obvious that we'd hit some kind of snow bank. Passengers had to wait on the jet until a snowplow cleared the way for buses. 
After the storm went through, Syracuse began picking up lake effect snow, and it's continuing to pile up. I'm Mike Seidel, the Weather Channel. Thank you, Mike. Again, our lake effect process continues to see some areas, especially around the Great Lakes, really pile up with the snows, as in the case of their mean annual snowfall coming off Lake Superior for areas of uh, the UP of Michigan and western New York. Some areas see over 100 inches. Want to know more about lake effect snow? Turn to our Weather Channel Classroom, Chapter 9. Weather Classroom is a production of the Weather Channel. To order the companion book for the Weather Classroom, send $9.95 plus $3.95 shipping and handling to the Weather Channel Education Services, 2600 Cumberland Parkway, Atlanta, Georgia, 30339. Now, your local forecast, accurate and dependable from the Weather Channel. Current regional conditions.